So, you all have seen beautiful 15 foot, 18 foot, 20 foot hops plants. If not in person, you've seen pictures on the internet, videos, but have you seen what's going on underground on a hops plant? That's what we're gonna talk about today. All about hops roots. Hi folks, my name is Max Raphael from Hops World, and today's tip number 41 is all about hops roots. So let's do it. Hey guys, here we are bright and early Saturday morning. It's still chilly out, maybe 36, 37 degrees. It's gonna warm up though. It has been 60 and 70 even yesterday. But I wanted to talk today about roots of your hops. Tip number 41 from Hops World. What we did here folks is we uncovered a plant as we're taking out some of the female plants out of our male hop yard. Yes, it is a male hop yard. We do put female plants in here to make crosses every year. So, this plant is, believe it or not, just starting its second year. It's spring here, very early in the spring, middle of March, and Last year we planted this as a little cutting, little potted plant, and it really took off. Now I can tell why, because we're digging it out and I decided to uncover some of the roots to show you what's happening below the surface. As we can see here, and now I'm gonna zoom in and explain the different parts of the root system of a hops plant. So this plant, is a variety Alpha Aroma, which actually was later named Raquel. It was Alpha Aroma when it was first created with 12 or 13% Alpha Aroma, uh, Alpha Acids, but once 15 and 18 and 20% Alpha Acid hops came out, they decided to change the name. It's Raquel. But anyway, after the first year, this plant has really grown, grown underground. This part of the plant is called the crown. That's the central portion of the plant. And the crown is usually where the little nodes, all these little nodes, I will do a little video going around the plant. You can see there's probably at least 50 little nodes after the first year, even ones up here. And these nodes, are white when they're underground and as they grow once they get to be about three inches long these are actually the part of a hops plant that's sold in europe in france and belgium for up to one thousand dollars per per kilo and these this turns out to be one of the most expensive vegetables in the world but these nodes will all sprout and become sprouts and the plant will grow. Once it breaks the surface and gets very close, it turns purple. Like this one here, there's one purple that just broke the surface. The dirt was right up to this level. And then once they're growing, they turn green like these that have been out in the sun for a while. So this part of the hops plant in Europe, many farms and some in America cut probably the first uh, two, three inches below the surface of the dirt to help to eliminate the funguses that reside in the crown, the top part of the plant over the winter. But in this case, it's only a second year plant. We wouldn't cut anything or even think about doing any kind of uh, 
cutting the roots, which some plant farms will definitely do. We do also three or four years in. But for this, we would just let this plant grow this year, for sure, the second year. But we would cut these down right to the ground normally, these old dead stalks. We haven't done that because we're taking the plant out. So as far as roots go, there's three different kinds of roots in a hops plant. The first one I'll talk about that we all know about are called rhizomes. And rhizomes are roots that usually run horizontal and very uh, low in the dirt, not too deep, shallow. And they are, have two uses. One use is to store energy for the plant in the winter. When the plant dries out, the nutrients that are in the plant return back down and get stored in the rhizomes over the winter. The other reason the plant has rhizomes is so the plant can expand naturally and grow because a rhizome will grow out its root and eventually pop up and sprout in another area. Naturally, hops grow along the edge of woods usually where it's partial shade, partial sun. And just like woods will overtake an area and expand, the rhizome is naturally genetically part of the hops plant so the hops plant can grow and sprout in another area and never die. So here we have rhizomes, which are typically the lighter colored, whitish plants. Now these are only the second year sprouts and there are some little nodes starting right here at the tip of this that will sprout and become longer and pop up through the soil. At the end of this long root here, there's also another rhizome that's about two feet long. When the rhizomes get longer, this one here is real white and light color, it's shallow. When they get longer, they do get thicker. But that's what rhizomes are. The second kind of root I'm gonna talk about are a typical root, just like any other plant that we think about, which are these big thick roots here. Although they are really horizontal growing, they typically go straight down or more straight down or sometimes grow horizontal and then dive into the soil like some of these are doing here, this one here. And they, they are designed to look mostly for water. These roots can go down five meters, 15 feet easily after a number of years. Their main purpose is to get water and they become very woody as we can see here on some of these and but some of these actually after they grow they can sprout rhizomes and nodes on them if they stay shallow enough but typically their design is to get water and the third root and probably the most important roots that no one even realizes the hops plants have are these super fine i call them little micro roots these here, which they're even finer than this, they grow in between these little fine roots. These little roots here are the roots that grow in the spring once it starts warming up and they absorb all the nutrients that the plant needs. Over the winter, these roots really die a lot in the cold, die back and don't function in the spring, but they regrow and even smaller than these, super micronutrients like a little web. So that's why a hops plant really doesn't need tons of fertilizers early in the spring, in March, let's say. A lot of people wait to start giving nitrogen until the plant gets to be uh, seven or eight feet tall. But uh, we usually give a type of slow release fertilizer as early as we can, just so make sure that the plant's not gonna be missing anything. But these are the third, and believe it or not, most important roots of a hops plant. These micro roots. They do get damaged when we dig up the plant, but they'll grow back. So there it is, folks. Three kinds of roots on a hops plant. You got the rhizomes that help it grow out and expand and store energy in the winter. You have the deep woody roots that look for water and you have the micro roots. 
the little mini roots that feed your plant all of its nutrients. I'm glad you could be with me today, guys. So this plant that we showed you in today's tip is only a first year plant. It's just starting into the second spring. This video here shows a third year plant starting into its fourth year and we uncovered it and check it out. It's full of rhizomes, full of sprouts. This was about a month later in the year in April when the sprouts were about three inches long. But a hops plant after the third, fourth and fifth year is going to be full, full, full of rhizomes and roots. I hope you learned a little about hops plants and hops roots and what's going on below the surface of the ground on a hops plant. Thank you for being with me today, folks. I really enjoyed it. Well, if you liked, put a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Click on the link and check out our weekly vlog all about hops. Thanks, folks. Cheers to life.